fantasy and adventure. Now, today we're going to draw plaids and checks. Now, I bet you never thought plaid and checks as a special art words, did you? Well, they really spice up your drawings, and I want to show you how to use them more effectively. Now, first we'll draw something everyone has in their home, a salt and pepper shaker. Now, we'll put them on a checkerboard tablecloth, and later we'll add a checkered pattern to this side of the space station platform on the Secret City mural. Meta Man and I are going to show you how to draw a face and make it into a mask today. Now, there's a real fun activity, and I know you want to watch it closely. Now, lots of kids have joined the Secret City Club, and Meta Man will tell you just how easy it is to become a member. Now, here's what you need to follow along. You need your drawing pad, your drawing pencil, and your activity notebook so you can make notes on how to make a mask. Now, you gather those up materials together, and I'll be right back. today? Are you in a good mood? Okay, let's blast across this piece of paper and let's draw some three-dimensional drawings. Now, we'll use all seven magic words plus that special art word, which is plaid and trucks. It's a really nice design on the side of a surface of a tablecloth. There's some curtains in your house. Or if you're drawing a secret city, the side of a building. Now, let's start this first drawing right here, the salt and pepper shaker, with two round spheres all lined up in direction one. A round circle there. A guideline, a light guideline going in direction one, and then draw the other salt shaker back here. This is my pepper shaker, and there's my salt shaker. Okay, now watch this. Draw an attachment, another attachment there to the bottom, and then we'll draw the glass body of the pepper shaker. A vertical line right in the middle. Are you keeping up with me all right? You forgot to loosen up your hands, huh? Shake all those kinks out of your hands. Now you can keep up with me, right? <laughs> okay, I had to get your energy all flowing there. Go in direction one, and then from this point right here, now watch this, let's slant this down. See what I did? Not vertical, but slanted down, makes it more interesting. And then we'll slant the other side down, make it like a little pyramid pepper shaker. There we go. And then we put a design on here. Design's really important in your drawings. We'll outline a nice design on the glass. And I'll outline a nice design on this side of the glass. And let's put the letter P right here on the side. Now watch this. I follow the direction of the bottom for the bottom of the P. I come up, and then I draw the letter P in there. You see how the top of the P goes in direction 7, and the bottom of the P here goes in direction 7? It's all with alignment, lining your lines up. And you can darken that in really black. Now, if you're writing on the side of a, a milk carton or this pepper shaker or the salt shaker or a cereal box, if you're drawing that on your drawing, make sure you line these lines up in direction one or direction seven to make your letters look like they're really sitting there. Let's draw the salt shaker back here, a vertical line, line this guideline up. I use lots of guidelines in my drawings. Did you put that guideline right there? Take your pencil and right up in direction one. Make sure you line that up correctly so it sits firmly on your piece of paper and then direction seven. See, direction one, direction seven. Then draw that neat little design on the side of your salt shaker and a neat design here on the side, on the shaded side. Since we mentioned shading, I'll go ahead and throw some shade on the left side all the way down, nice and dark underneath the overhang. You're getting good at that, so I won't have to go too much in detail about making it nice and dark underneath the overhang. And then we'll put the letter S on the side here. Just draw S and then blacken it in. All the way down. Now, artists have always used special designs to decorate their drawings. Take a look at this one. <laughs>
Now let's add the checkered platform or the checkered tablecloth underneath the salt and pepper shaker. Draw a direction one guideline from mm, about right here. Up in that direction. Here's the corner. And then slant up in direction seven. Ready for this? Put your pencil right here. Is your pencil right there? Okay, follow along with me. Ready? Direction seven. And we'll make the tablecloth just hanging over the side. First of all, we'll draw all the direction seven lines. There's a direction seven line that's matching this line. Matching this line. Coming across here. Coming from behind the pepper shaker. Don't be afraid to continue line very lightly right through the pepper shaker. Keep all these lines lying down. Uh, see what happened here? My line actually went up too high, didn't it? So I'll go ahead and I'll fix it. Nice, a little bit darker. And make sure you keep it lying down in direction seven. I'm going to go right through my salt and pepper shakers to make sure I line them up. Now from where this point matches the side, straight down. From there, this point hits your guideline in direction one, straight down, straight down. From that point, from this point right here, see where this guideline comes through? Let me find the right one. There we go. Comes right down. Here's my guideline. Straight down and straight down. Now we draw some direction one lines. Nice four short and square here in the center. You see that? Four short and squares, and they get smaller as they go back into the distance because of that magic word size. Direction one, direction one, direction one. And this guideline's continued all the way through. And this guideline's continued all the way through. And then you just make it disappear into the distance because of density. And I'll go ahead and I'll make the stripes wrapping around in direction, what direction is that? Direction seven, direction one, direction one, direction one. Here's the fun part where you get to go in and you can draw your pattern. You start here on the corner, nice black one, or you can leave this one white and do these two dark. It's up to you. I skip every other one along in my direction one guideline. This is a delightful pattern. It's really neat to add it to an empty space in your secret city or onto some garments so that your creatures are wearing, some clothing designs. Or if you're designing puppets, you can put on the side of puppets or even on masks. You can decorate the part of your mask with these plaid checks. And I'll be talking about masks in a little while. Maybe we can add some plaid and checks to that. Every other, and then I'll come over the side, see? Not here, but this one right here. Nice and dark. Hope you're keeping up with me. This is kind of fun, isn't it? <laughs> Being able to draw all these designs on your drawings, make them really fun to look at. It enhances it, makes it like music to your eye. Makes your drawings sound better to your eye. Decorating the sides, putting some texture on them. And then, which one would I shade next? Would I shade this one right here? I don't think I would because this one's dark, so I'd probably shade this one right here. Yeah, I sure would because it's white above there. And I skip this one, I go on to this one. And the same pattern's continued all the way along here, all the way back across the table, and all the way down on the left-hand side of your tablecloth. And there you have a really nice design. Draw, draw, draw. Practice your drawing 20 or 30 minutes a day. And when you're practicing today, how about adding some plaid and check designs to your drawing? My mustache curls around and is sort of thick. Yes. This week's club activity is to draw a self-portrait of yourself. Yes. Yesterday, I drew a wonderful drawing of myself. Oh, I had a great big red hat and a very long, skinny mustache that twirled on the ends. Unfortunately, yesterday's self-portrait looks nothing like me today, so I'm doing another drawing of myself. 
if you're not a club member, send your self-portrait to the commander. Here is a wonderful drawing by a club member. Very nicely done. Send your drawing to the Secret City Club, Post Office Box 444, Moraga, California, 94556. Have you finished your self-portrait yet? Well, you know what you could even do with that self-portrait? You could turn it into a mask. Well, before we turn our self-portraits into masks, let's do a drawing together, and let's turn this drawing into a mask to get you warmed up to turn your self-portrait into a mask. Start right here with an oval on your blank piece of paper, a round circle, and then we'll separate the circle with some guidelines so we draw the face in a real structured map. It's like a road map, so you won't get lost when you're drawing the nose and the eyes and the ears. We'll draw the eyes right here, one eye on this side. See where this line and this line come together? Well, we need another eye right on this side, so I'll draw one more over here. And we need a nose. So we'll put a nose right where the lines intersect there in the middle. How about an ear. Now the ear, from where this line and this curve meet, the ear ends. That's a nice guideline, a little rule of thumb for when you're drawing faces. And then we'll draw another ear over on this side. Let's draw the grin line. Give me a smile. Can you, can you give me, oh, you can give me a bigger smile than that. A real big grin. Okay, now feel your grin line right there on the side. Well, I have a mustache, so I can't feel my smile, but if you smile, you, can, you have a grin line right there, right? Well, we'll add grin lines onto the side of our character here. I'll put two to make him look a little more happy, a little more jubilant, vivacious. He's a real positive thinker, huh? Look at this big smile. He's having a real good day. There's his lip. And then how about some hair? But before we do the hair, we'll draw a hat. Let me darken in the ears so that you can see the hat. Now we'll draw the hat going to... Are you keeping up with me? You're supposed to be drawing the mask with me, okay? Go ahead and draw that circle and just draw a hat across the top. Draw right across the top of the eyes. Then we'll pull the hat coming back behind the ear. Come across the top again. Pull the hat back behind the ear there. And then let's draw the brim of the hat. Real loose and sketchy on the top here. There we go. And we can make a farmer's hat or a top hat or um, any kind of hat you like. I'll go up vertical lines and then draw the top of the hat right here. And then some hair coming around here, poking out some hair here, and then an eye, and then an eye right here, and then how about a line underneath here, and a line underneath here to give it a little more expression, make them look a little more happy. I'm going to darken in the hair a little bit, darken in the hair along here, darken in the hair here, and then darken in the chin. Hello, Commander. Meta Man, how are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. Commander, I've been watching what you're doing. I would like to learn how to do this so I can make my own mask. You know what's neat about drawing masks? Hmm. Is the more you draw faces like this, you, the more you're inclined to take a real fresh look at all the people around you and all the faces around you. Hmm. There's lots of faces every day you see, isn't there? They certainly are, Commander. So I decided to take a fresh look at this face right here and draw it in a different way. So I decided I'd make him a big grin and two, two ears on the side. Not quite as big as I usually draw the ears. So you just draw that circle, mm -hmm. and then you do a line down the middle, just like a little darker than that, maybe. Okay, so that's so you can see the road map. That's so you won't get lost. Okay. Then you draw the eyes. Okay. There you go. Boy, your eyes look better than my eyes. Oh, well, thank you, that? Commander. <laughs> You're really talented. Draw the, the nose, the little circle right in the middle. Okay. And he's a positive thinker, so he's always smiling. Oh, always smile. Okay. Real vivacious, eh? You draw the smile, grin lines. Can you grin for me? Uh, I can't see your grin lines either because you have a mustache, too. <laughs> well, Commander, I think that I'm going to continue my drawing and, and uh, I'll show you my mask a little bit later, okay? All right. Darken in the bottom, and then I'll put a band across the top. I'll put a reflection here in the middle. Leave a reflection. See, nice and dark right there? And then watch as I skip a space, and I continue the darkness across here. And then I'll put a feather out of the hat. You want a feather? You want to put like a, a feather or a daisy or a flower? Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll put a feather coming out of the hat. There you go. And now we'll put some kind of collar right here. Now, 
The way to make this into a mask is you take some scissors and you cut out along the edge. I'll have to color that in. Color a dark cut out along the edge of your face and your hat and your feather, at, at, at the outside of the brim right here, underneath the ear, around the hair, down the side of the face, across here and down. You cut that out, even draw a, a little ribbon right here just to give you a little more room to glue your stick to it. You take your crowns or your colors, you color it in really, really darkly, and you come out with something like this, okay? Nice colored in. You can use your colors to shade it in nice and dark. Well, Commander, look at look what I've created. <laughs> oh, that's great. You already knew how to take the cut out of the drawing and glue and tape it or glue it to the back, huh? Yes, Commander. You just I... put tape across the back of your stick. Yes. Did you use a painting dowel for that? Uh, for your stick? Let's see. Yes, I did. See, this is just a, a piece of extra scrap I found in my back part of the living environment. Look at this. You put some extras on here. You mm -hmm. put a red hat mm -hmm. and you put a mustache on yeah. your mask. And, and a, a scarf. scarf. That's a neat idea. Well, that way, Commander, I can change my mask's appearance anytime I want to. <laughs> Fantastic ideas. You're real creative. Now remember, draw a picture of a face. You cut it out carefully. You glue it onto some cardboard. And then you take a stick or a dowel and you tape it to the back. And you have yourself a mask. Now let's go to the Secret City Gallery and take a look at what Tim Flynn did of Cindy the Dragon. Notice Tim Flynn's color and his contour and even the beautiful wings back in the background. He has a red planet and a blue cloud in front. Excellent drawing, Tim. Nice design. Even detail there with the red pen on the wings. I like that. <laughs> Neat drawing. Let's look at the next drawing. This is done by Sharon Kim, and she thought Cindy the Dragon would, would be a two-headed creature with wings and shading, and she put Cindy the Dragon inside of a cage. Oh, no. I guess everybody has a different idea what Cindy the Dragon would look like. See, that's okay. Everybody has their own imagination. She put some little creature standing next to the cage looking in and shading on the top four shortened circle, shading on the bottom four shortened circle, and she used surface. The near part of the cage is drawn lower in the paper. Excellent drawing. I bet you finished about 15,000 secret cities by now, huh? Haven't you? <laughs> well, see, the more you practice, the more secret cities you draw, the more confident you get with your drawings, and the better your drawings get. Now, today you're supposed to put a little bit of plaid and checker designs on the side of some secret city building, or a flag you're drawing, or if you're drawing the inside of a room, you can draw it on the curtain. I'm drawing the plaid and check design as an emblem of almost nation nationality, or from what planet it, the space station's from on the side here. It's an emblem, and I'm going to draw the vertical lines going down, a direction one line off, direction one line here, and then shoo, another direction one line. And now I'll put the plaid and check design by darkening in each one of these squares here. See, now I'm switching off every other square. I like putting these textures and these designs on the sides of buildings. Instead of just having a blank building there, you have some really interesting designs for your eye to feast on. It's like a dessert for your eye, you know? Makes the drawing taste better to your eye. And then I'll draw darkness on the bottom square here. One on this square. And this square, no. I'm very careful to make sure I skip every other one. Sometimes <laughs> when I'm doing applied checks really quickly, I'll forget and I'll start at one end and I'll start it at the other end. And when it comes together in the middle, it won't match up and I'll have two or three squares that are all black. That's why you start from one point and you work your way across so you don't get confused and lose track of where you're at with your drawing. I'll draw this area dark too, and that completes it. I'm going to put a really dark border outline over here. And that finishes my plaid check design. I wanted to come down to the secret city underground, under planet down here, and add some more tone and some more shading to all my stalactites that are hanging. Now, I'm going to continue this cross-hatching style all the way across. A little bit right here, and then cross hatch it across.
<laughs> when I take my dark pen and I add the underhanging shadow across through here, it really makes that grass stand apart from the rocks and from the stalactites. Now, this is the separation line from the ocean of the planetscape, from Unibir Island right here. You see Unibir Island, how it comes down into the orange pond right here? And then the underplanet with the piping system, the, the water system, and then the security platform here. And it makes sure that the tube or the um, verbal transportation system that's down here never breaks down and always runs on schedule and on time. All the way across right here. Now, if you have your little notepad in your back pocket, your drawing idea pad, go ahead and draw yourself a stalactite hanging down from a grass tuft and see if you can shade it on the left side and add a tone all the way across with your pencil. And I hope you have that little notepad hand in your back pocket all the time when you're walking to school or anywhere you are because you never know when that great idea of your next drawing is going to hit you and you have to take sketches from your imagination right off the bat. And you won't always have a big sketch pad handy, but you can always have that little notepad in your pocket. Toning the drawing. It's almost like plan checks, isn't it? But it's not. It's cross-hatching the shading down here. And then I'll draw a little bit of darkness along the side up here. Now let's see if you can recognize this magic word that Elmo is going to introduce to you. didn't like that very much. Overlapping is used a lot in all my stalactites. You see how this near one overlaps in front of the far one, which overlaps in front of the further one, which overlaps in front of this really long drooping one in the background back there. I use overlapping a lot, almost as much as shading, but I think shading is the one I use the most. My favorite magic word. I think every artist develops a favorite magic word along with a favorite art element. I think my favorite art element is droop. Same thing as the splash. Splash and droop are the same thing. Splash is the word that everything comes up from one point, and then droop is turning that upside down. All the way down. And then I'll add the cross-hatching style all the way across here. I want to put another window in there. I don't like this empty spot, so there's n no... But he's saying I can't put a window there, and I'm the builder of the secret city, so I'll put a window there. And, and here's another spot right here, so I'll stick a window right in there. And if you wanted to, when you draw these windows, you can draw maybe a ladder hanging out of the window and, and have some creatures climbing up the ladder, or someone looking out the window waving at their friend. Anything you want to do, because this is your domain of your secret city when you draw it. You get to do anything you want. A little bit more darkness because I don't think that this grass tuft right here is highlighted enough or it stands out enough against the stalactite. I want to continue the shading down. And now I want to darken in that road. This is where the tube goes down into the underground. It's a pretty steep drive, huh? Everybody picks up speed when it goes down there. Everybody buckles their seatbelts when they know that they're coming north near that hill right there. Probably goes about a million miles an hour. And I'll draw the cross hatching all the way down. And one more mountain. Oop, there's another spot I can put a window. <laughs> I love putting little windows in here. Is that fun? I'll put another one and then another smaller one. We can really go to town. See, I don't like those empty spots. I like to fill every little spot up with something exciting. Draw, draw, draw. Practice your drawing 20 or 30 minutes a day. Stay in a super positive attitude. And I'll see you next time.
fantasy.